right, it is Food City Friday, and today we are all giving a special treat, mm. a very special summer dessert. We have Chef Julie here with us, bakingwithjulie.com. Always fun to have you. Yes, it's always fun to be here. Happy Friday, Happy and really, Friday. what a perfect treat for the weekend. It is a perfect treat, and I just made these recently for a wedding. I had a friend of mine, I helped her out, and made 120 little cheesecakes, oh. four flavors. But the favorite flavor of the bride and groom was the mango cheesecake. And I thought, isn't that a perfect little summer treat to make, you know, and yes. all of that. So I thought I would show you guys how to do that. And we have a peach version we'll talk about later as well. Oh, nice. Mango, peach, perfect for summertime. Yes. And I love that they're individual. Yes, and it makes it so easy to serve because you don't have to cut anything. And because you can do different flavors fairly easily, you know, people can have a variety of choices if you want to get creative with it. But it all starts with the crust. Okay. And what I like to do, I always like to bring flavor into what I'm doing. So I didn't use graham cracker, I used ginger snaps. Oh, yum. yummy, yummy, yummy. Yeah, much bold. Much more bolder. So it's just the ginger snap crumbs uh, with some a little butter and a little sugar. And the way I do it is I take about a tablespoon okay. and I put inside a little little liner. And these liners, if you notice, are foil liners. Oh, okay. They come in all colors, actually, if you order them online. Uh, but I like them better. They don't bleed through, uh, like they don't get wet uh, and show through the way paper okay. ones can do. And they're they a little sturdier. A little sturdy, they I are a little sturdier. Say, yeah. So if I put that in, and this is my very special little tamper right here. <laughs> this is a little cut my kids used about 20 years say, ago. I recognize You, you it, recognize yes. a little tyke, so I think oh. anyway. But it's just the perfect, I just do that. And it's, and it's stamped right down, see that? Okay. So that's the way to press it in. And when you fill that up, you would um, bake them at you know, 375 for maybe eight minutes. It doesn't take that long to where they kind of set up a little bit. Let them cool, and then you end up with what we have right here. And look at this. Yeah, we have a dozen of them, right? Okay. So, so that's easy. So that part's done. We'll move on to the next thing, which is the cheesecake itself. Now, I'm going to tell on myself a little bit today. When I came, I had brought the wrong beaters for my little hand mixer. And yep. you tried so hard. I tried so hard. I was like, what is wrong? So I don't know. I don't even know where these came from. <laughs> I was like, what is this doing in here? But you know, that's how life is. Sometimes things happen, and you just got to roll with it and make it work. And that's what we're doing. So and I'm using your all's whisk. That's what I'm doing. It's just cheesecake, y'all. We don't have to get upset about it. So it's all good. But in here, I have eight ounces of softened cream cheese, a half cup of sugar, and just a little bit of cornstarch. Okay. And we kind of mix that together. Once that's good and smooth, we're going to add two whole eggs. Now at home with your beater, uh, your, your real mixer, you would probably just add them one at a time. Okay, nice and slow. And let them, let them kind of get in there a little bit. It's really helpful to have your ingredients at room temperature. Oh, really? You okay. want your sour, you want All your, your eggs, yeah, your, your sour eggs, cream. Yep, your cream cheese. You can let that stuff, you know, the sour cream, it can set out for a few hours. It's fine. It's not, nothing bad's going to happen to it okay. at all. And so look here, at you go. You're using your arm today. Get, yeah, You're get the strength going muscles. here. So there we've got this part, and you'll just want to get that really smooth. And once you have that, we have some other fun things to add. We have a little vanilla, so a little teaspoon of real vanilla. Okay. I have about a tablespoon or so of fresh squeezed lemon juice. Oh, that makes such a difference. Now, you could it? do lime juice, and I'm thinking next time I make this, I'm, I'm going to do lime juice, but I didn't okay. think about that till it was too late. Anyway, a little bit of salt, just about a pinch. And here we have a cup of sour cream. Okay, cup and of it, sour cream. Yep. And that's going in here too. Now that, I've not seen that one with a cheesecake. With a cheesecake. The recipe I use uses sour cream with the cream cheese. Nice. And it, 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 it works really I well. Bet. So we're going to mix this. Now at this point, it's just kind of plain. And here's where you get to play a little bit. So what we're going to do is add in about two-thirds cup of mango puree. Oh, this okay. is something you often find in Indian cuisine, a mango puree. If you can't find it, straight up mango puree, you can make your own, get some mango chunks. Like I got a, a bag of like this 12 or 14 ounce frozen bag, let it thaw, put it in the blender, it makes about a cup. Okay. So, but it's just, can you smell the mango? Isn't that good? Oh my goodness, it Isn't smells it so delicious. delicious. It's such a wonderful thing. I love mango. I do. It's just fun. I feel like, it is I don't fun. Know, it's more special when you do it something is. with mango. You know, when I was a kid growing up here in Appalachia, I didn't know what a mango was. Right. I hadn't seen one. Now we go to the store and we see all these wonderful fruits from all over, and I've been able to eat mangoes where they grow. In Cambodia, it was one place. And you said they were oh, absolutely. Gosh. I tell you, if y'all ever get a mango right off the tree, do it. God, oh my gosh, it is just heaven. And here we have this wonderful, beautiful oh, cheesecake. Wonderful. Isn't okay. it, it smell good? Mm -hmm. I like to use my blue handled 
scoop uh, okay. for this one. You know, if you get these kind, they come in all colors, and each color is a size. But the blue uh -huh. size, see, they're all different. Yeah, so if I go to any place in America that's a, a, a commercial kitchen, I know what the blue one will do. Okay, perfect. <laughs> it's the same. And you just take them and just boop put it right in there. You want to fill this up all the way to the top. Okay. This isn't like a cupcake that you it's put it two-thirds full. You want it as full as you can possibly make it. it. takes about 25 minutes, only at 275 degrees. Okay. You don't bake it as hard as you would, say, a cupcake or whatever. And then you want them to be a little jiggly, but set, but a little jiggly. Take them out, let them cool completely before you put them in the fridge. They probably should chill overnight. Uh, sometimes when I'm removing mine the next day, they might feel like they're a little stuck in there. So just make sure maybe before you, um, you know, take them into the fridge if they're a little bit loose and then you're good to go. And we'll talk about how we garnish them. Perfect. In just a minute. So we're going to fill the tin. We're putting them in the oven. Hey, for this recipe with videos and instructional things and the ingredient list, go to her website, bakingwithjulie.com. You'll find all kinds of good stuff there as well. For more on all these products, of course, you can always check out foodcity.com.